Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyFlorals.com and today I am bringing you another process video using my homemade kit. This is a collab with Grace Islander, otherwise known as Anna, here on YouTube and we both made beautiful kits and we're making layouts with them for inspiration for you guys to dig into your stash, make some kits, and get them, get those layouts coming out. So today I'm doing a very odd layout. Um, I'm using a ton of these tags from Jelly Bean Soup. I picked these up on Amazon a little bit ago. I think it was right before Christmas, November, December uh, time frame, just so I could uh, get the $25 in order to get the free shipping on one of my products that I needed for Christmas. So it was a little happy accident that I found these tags. And so these tags are all craft, but some have die cut words, some have die cut uh, images. And some are just regular tags with open frames, and some are just plain tags. So I'm using a bunch of photos on this layout. I have a couple here that I just glued tags onto, and I'm going to be trimming those out. So these are some nature pictures from when my boyfriend and I went on a hike, and we saw some beautiful wildlife. And since I didn't have great zoom on my DSLR, these are the best photos that I got. So instead of using a giant picture with a lot of white space, I decided to utilize these frames and put my photos behind them. And so I'm going to end up using, I think, five photos on this layout, three of which are in frames and two of which are not in frames. I'm also using this pink paisley yellow frame for this bird, and I'm just going to glue that down and trim it out later. So I'm using three bird photos, one frog photo, and then one of my boyfriend um, to finish off this layout. And the background paper is one of those papers from Joann's that you can get for like 12 for $2 or that sale, whatever it is. Um, I think this one's from American Crafts. It's got a beautiful chevron pattern in the background. And so I chose this uh, pattern paper background because I thought it let the lighter colors in the photos pop quite a bit. So this bird photo, for example, has a very light gray background for the sky as well as the bird photo in the bottom left. And I thought that the teal background really helped everything pop. Um, this layout was complicated because it was a grid type pattern, but it wasn't a full grid pattern um, since there were different orientations for the tags. Um, everything got a little bit mixed up. But it did, after a while, I finally did settle on a layout here. But um, I'm pulling other things out from my kit, including some of these uh, cut-aparts from Pebbles. This one says Notes, and it's just a light green color, which matches that story die cut. And that story die cut is from, I believe, a Dear Lizzie collection. Um, I throw away my packaging for my die cuts, so I'm not 100% sure. But I've had it for a while, and I believe I purchased it at Tuesday morning. So now I am trying to figure out where everything's going to go. I don't want too many photos next to each other, and I don't want too many of the similar tags next to each other. So that was the real challenge for this layout. Plus I wanted to include that 3x4 card in order to have a spot for journaling that wasn't too busy. I know I want my large photo to go on the right-hand side of this layout, but what I haven't decided is where all the other photos are going to go. So I come up with this idea to move the frog photo up to the top left area and then have the bird photo come to the bottom left area. You'll see me switch that around in a second. Um, switch that with the journaling card here. The main problem was trying to figure out the orientations of the tags. The ones that have the words have to go a certain way in order for you to read them. And I also didn't want too many icons next to each other. There was just a lot going on here. Um, and it is quite a busy layout, I will not lie. Um, I feel like I could have done it even busier if I wanted. Um, adding a couple more embellishments here and there, just a little tad of everything. And it would look really beautiful, but um, I tried to keep it toned down since it was a little bit busy. So I'm starting to get closer to what the final arrangement will look like. Um, the photo on the right and the two medium photos on the left hand side. So you have like a triangle of large photos and then the journaling in the bottom right with a small photo to its right and then a small photo in the top left. So like I mentioned, five photos on this layout. I'm a little bit different than what I usually do. Um, I would usually make this sort of photo style a pocket page, but I did not this time. I thought I'd stretch my limits here and make a 12x12 12 12 layout using five photos. So now I know I want to add some paper to the back of these photos as well as some of the framed tags. So I pull out this striped paper from the Echo Park Just Be You 6x6 paper pad, which is part of my kit. Um, if you guys haven't watched the kit making videos, definitely watch those. Um, I'll have it linked down below so you guys can watch it. 
I'm also going to map my large 4x6 photo on this pattern paper, which I believe is from the... Who makes that collection? Pretty Little Studio, I believe. And now everything's sort of coming together now. I'm happy with this layout. I'm going to glue down my journaling card. And then I'll cut off the branding strip later because I realize that's still on the um, bottom there. But I'm going to start gluing down the tags that I don't want anything behind and my photos as well. And don't ask me why I'm using liquid adhesive. I have no idea why. I normally do not. I am going to back this jelly bean soup tag with more of that striped paper to bring in more of that light green minty color that is also framing my frog photo up there and also matches the title as well as the journaling card which is perfect and now I'm noticing um, there's a lot of craft on this page which I don't mind it's one of my favorite uh, neutrals to use um, but it needs some more pops of color throughout so I'm going to pull out some embellishments once the rest of these items are glued down um, if you do plan on doing a grid like this I would recommend using the same size tags like these are um, it definitely helped a lot to get a finalized piece together with they are all the same size. I really enjoyed working with this unique grid style. Um, I've never seen anything like this, at least that I remember, but it was definitely, definitely fun to work with. I am going to back another one of the tags. Um, this arrow tag will be backed with a little bit of that polka dot paper. Nothing too fancy, just some polka dots. But that's the mat behind my uh, photo of my boyfriend. And just going to glue that down um, in place. I probably should have backed more of these but I didn't want to make it too busy um, and some of them do get glued down crooked which is not a pet peeve of mine but I know it is of some people so I'm sorry um, if that bothers you. I wasn't paying attention before the glue dried and just had to roll with it. So now we're starting to get things together here. I thought I was going to use some stamps but I end up not using any stamps uh, but I pull out a Heidi Swap Puppy Heart sticker and stick that in the negative spot. This one says hashtag freedom, so I put it underneath the photo of my eagle, my bald eagle. That was a really cool shot. Since I am working with a kit, I find it easier to go through embellishments one at a time. If I find something that matches, I use it up. So here I'm adding some of these mint colored hearts, one inside a negative heart, and then one with my photo at the bottom left. And I also have these puppy stickers from Pink Fresh Studio, and I end up using two little vines here to make this cluster beautiful, this little flower, or I mean butterfly and vines. So that butterfly is actually from Recollections. I absolutely love it. I thought I was going to use some of my Tim Holtz words. Um, I realized that the bottom edge is crooked, so I try to peel that um, back a little bit. Um, but I try to use some of my Tim Holtz words, but I felt they were too strong for this layout, too bold. Um... I'm pulling out a bunch of things from my st kit stash, stash kit, and if you guys would like to know what everything is, definitely check out the video where I show you how I put together my kit. Um, so here I'm looking through all of those pieces again. They're just so large, I haven't used them in a page yet, and um, I really wanted to on this kit since it's my first kit having them uh, available, but I pull out these Studio Calico Word phrase stickers instead in a dark teal which works beautifully with this color scheme and just uh, going around and adding a bunch of them probably too many because I'm addicted to phrase stickers but this layout's almost complete I absolutely love how it came out in the end I add a couple more things including this little camera here which is from Chamel um, I know some people have problems with tag holes leaving them raw like this with no thread through them so I'm sorry if that's something you don't like but um, it didn't bother me very much at all so I'm going to just leave them as they are because if I put thread through all of them it'd be too much for me at least but I know a lot of people find that appealing so just wanted to give you a little warning about that. I'm looking through my wood veneer now to add a couple more touches, some butterflies and birds. And that pretty much finishes up this layout. I hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to check out Anna's process video for this week down below. And we'll be sharing another process video um, soon, as well as the final Killa Kitsch and layout share. So definitely check that out and subscribe if you haven't already. But I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!